Hello Year 11, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to start with a quick recap. We're just going to recall what we looked at last lesson. That's how did Hitler establish a dictatorship. So if you remember, there was a couple of stages. So Hitler planned a legal revolution through the passing of an enabling act that would give him dictatorial powers. He exploited the Reichstag fire to give him support and make the Nazis the dominant party in the March 1933 elections and in a position to put forward the enabling act. And then through political deals and intimidation, Hitler passed the Enabling Act. He used the act to get rid of all external opposition. So trade unions, state governments and political parties all were now gone. And then finally, as we looked at last lesson, Hitler eliminated internal opposition from the SA and secured the loyalty of the army through the Night of the Long Knives. And with the death of Hindenburg in 1934, Hitler was supremely in control. OK, so just on to the next slide. Now we've understood that. So for today's lesson, if you could put this heading, how did the Nazis control Germany after 1934? And just put these three subheadings as a kind of list. So number one, the Nazi police state. Number two, propaganda, censorship and indoctrination. Number three, economic recovery. Life got better under the Nazis. And in today's lesson, we're just going to look at the first of these, the Nazi police state. If you just pause the video so you can get this copied down into your book. And then on to the next slide. So just to get some definitions, first of all, a democracy versus a police state. So in a democracy like we have, the police are technically non-political and independent. Their job is just to arrest normal criminals, fraudsters, thieves, murderers. They play no role in politics. But in a police state, police are politicized and they're used as a weapon of the state. So along with normal criminals, they arrest people deemed to be enemies of the state. That's people who publish anti-government pamphlets or distribute anti-government newspapers. So anyone who protested on the street against the government would be arrested. Anyone who produced a pamphlet that criticised Hitler would be arrested. Anyone who tried to publish a newspaper that had negative stories about the Nazis, they'd be arrested. And it was the role of the police and the authorities in the state to do this. So if you could just, again, Pause this video and just note down democracy versus police state and just get this information down in your book. OK, and then on to the next slide. So why did the Nazis want a police state? Why did they want a police that's politi politicised that they can use as a weapon? First of all, to get rid of anyone who continued to plot against and oppose them, such as the communists and the socialists, if they tried to reform, to silence anyone who spoke out against them, to help them to create the kind of state they wanted for Germany. Everyone had to accept Nazi values and beliefs without question. The Nazis called this Gleichaltung. Historians called it Nazification. The German people had to submit to Nazi ideas. They had to live the way the Nazis wanted them to live. If they stepped out of line, that's where the police and the authorities would come into play and would arrest anyone who was classed as a dissident. That means anyone who went against Nazi ideas and the Nazi vision for Germany. So again, just pause the video and get this detail down into your book and then we can move on. OK, 11, it's now time to look at the organisation of the Nazi police state. And you can see on this diagram that there are a number of components. First of all, there was the SS, the protection squad. They controlled all police and security services. Under them, there was the SD. They were the security service uniform they spied on Nazi opponents led by Reinhard Heydrich. Then you had the Gestapo, the secret police undercover. They're greatly feared by people. They're led by Reinhard Heydrich. And then you've got the concentration camp. So we're going to look at each of these elements in turn in a bit more detail. So just on to the next slide. So the most important aspect of the police state was the SS. They're led by Himmler. By 1939, they numbered 250,000. They're fanatical Nazis. They were brutal and feared. Their job was to ruthlessly hunt down enemies of the state. They arrested people and imprisoned them without trial. They tortured and murdered at will. And the SD, set up in 1931 as the intelligence body of the Nazi party. The SD was actually part of the SS. The SD was run by a man called Reinhard Heydrich and its role provided the SS with intelligence on who to torture, murder and arrest. OK, let's look at the next aspect of the security services. On to the next slide. 
So perhaps most feared was the Gestapo, which was Hitler's secret police, meaning they weren't uniformed. They just looked like everyday Germans. So they were a division of the SS as well. They didn't wear a uniform. They had the power to arrest anyone, anywhere. They relied on a web of informers, people who told tales, people who grasped on their neighbours, their friends, for being communist sympathisers or being socialists or possessing a pamphlet that's critical of Hitler. So everybody in Germany was afraid of the Gestapo, partly because they were the secret police. No one knew who they were. It could be the person next to you on the train, on the bus. It could be anyone, the person who overhears your conversation in a restaurant, and then suddenly you're arrested. That probably explains the fear that the Gestapo instilled in German people. On to the next slide. So obviously what happened to all the prisoners that the SS arrested, that the Gestapo arrested, that the SD discovered. So as the Nazi police state grew, so did the number of arrests, leading to new prisons called concentration camps opening. You've got to see these as political prisons. The people inside them weren't criminals, they weren't murderers, they weren't thieves, they were people who were enemies of the state, people who produced pamphlets, they were people who produced newspapers, they were socialists, they were communists, they were undesirables in the community, they were foreigners, they were Jewish, they were whatever. And by 1939, there were over 150,000 Germans in these concentration camps. And you can see on the map, they're dotted all over Germany from north to south. But on to the next slide. So now it comes to our task. We've got to get some notes then in our book to show our understanding of the Nazi police state. So I want you to write a few sentences in each box to show how the following contributed to the Nazi police state. So you can arrange this if you want, as I've done in a sequence of boxes, or you can use a sequence of subheadings, I don't mind. So you begin with the SS, and then you'd read the Word document that's attached to Firefly, and that'll help you put information down about the role of the SS. You can also look back to this presentation. Do the same for the SD, remember the Word document. Do the same for the Gestapo, remember a combination of the Word document and PowerPoint. And finally, there's a little bit we haven't looked at on this presentation. It's about the bias in the judges and the courts. The judges and the courts were Nazi judges and Nazi courts. So there's no such thing as an unbiased judge or jury in Germany. It was all stacked against these so-called enemies of the state. So you'll have to read that separately in the Word document. Once you've done that, that concludes today's lesson. And hopefully you've understood how Hitler was determined to keep control of Germany after 1934. And one of the biggest means he does this is to eliminate terror, terrorizing the German people into behaving and following Nazi ideals. Okay, thank you.